Dr. Knowles, if you'll come on over here and just kind of be on standby, please. Um, yeah, Scott, do you have a question? I do. That's where my notes are. <laughs> so I'm basically going to be telling you what is on the news release here, too. Um, we'll go ahead and get started here, then. Welcome to the Children's Hospital. I'm Scott Kopenbarger. I'm the Director of Marketing and Community Relations here at the hospital. And we have been hearing a lot about this virus that's been sweeping across the nation. I believe it's 10 states so far and Oklahoma has been one of those reported. Um, just wanted to let you know that at the Children's Hospital, we've also seen an increase in the number of hospitalizations due to respiratory viruses. And from August 1st through the 28th this year, 115 patients have tested positive for rhinovirus, enterovirus illnesses compared to 75 during the same time of last year. So that kind of gives you an idea that uh, the cold and flu season has already begun and is upon us right now. And uh, we also will talk a little bit about the process of if indeed this is the enterovirus EVD68. Right now we do not have any confirmed cases of that, but we are in the process of testing with the state health department, which is working with the CDC on this issue. So, um, but we, we, we would expect that we probably would, like other states, but I don't want to get into the doctor's territory right now. So I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Curtis Knowles, that's K-N-O-L-E-S. He's an emergency room physician here at the Children's Hospital, and he can explain more about this virus. Thank you very much, Dr. Knowles. Hello. I think we'll start by saying that Enterovirus D68 is part of a family of enterovirus um, that we see commonly during the summer cold season. So this is a common type of virus that we see. D68 has been around since the 1960s and causes some of the same symptoms as every other enterovirus and there's believed to be about 100 subtypes of enterovirus that are out there. The D68 enterovirus appears to be causing more upper respiratory symptoms and wheezing than other types. The enterovirus actually lives in the GI tract and then causes uh, mainly GI symptoms, but can also cause cough, cold, congestion, runny nose. In this particular case, appears to be causing a lot of wheezing and uh, exacerbation of asthma symptoms. We have had an increased number of patients coming through the emergency department uh, since it was first identified in the Midwest, and a lot of these are believed to be due to the enterovirus. However, the mild symptoms uh, are just classified as an upper respiratory infection. Like, um, we can test where the enterovirus here on campus, however, the further identification into whether it's enterovirus D68 or if it's just uh, another one of the subtypes has to be done through the State Department of Health in conjunction with the Center for Disease Control. Uh, there have been ICU admissions uh, due to respiratory distress and persistent asthma symptoms. However, those numbers are not available at this time. Okay. Uh, most importantly, the best way to deal with the enterovirus, like all other viruses, is prevention. So it's important for parents to understand that it's good hand washing, uh, disinfecting solid surfaces as often as possible. If someone else is sick, avoiding that person as much as possible, not drinking after them, kissing them, hugging them, coming into closer contact with the virus, which can also obviously uh, spread that illness. Uh, and that's the case with all viral illnesses. So enterovirus, RSV, the best treatment is actually prevention. The, I guess at this point I'll open up to questions to start. I think that if you have high persistent fevers uh, for multiple days. Uh, the big one with this virus seems to be respiratory distress. So if your child's breathing fast and working hard to breathe, so using the 
muscles of the belly and the chest to really breathe in and out with effort and then wheezing uh, an audible sound when they breathe in or out that could be a concern that there's something going on um, especially if your child has an underlying underlying medical illness uh, such as cerebral palsy asthma illnesses that can make you particularly susceptible to worse infections It seems to be kind of less than five is the most affected. However, kids all the way through kind of adolescence can be affected. The older you get, it seems that there are milder symptoms. Our bodies are better able to handle those symptoms and deal with it on its own. How do you treat it and how long do those symptoms last? There's no treatment available and there's no vaccine available. So it's supportive care. So if a patient's dehydrated, it's IV fluids, if they're having trouble breathing or wheezing, albuterol and other medications to support uh, their respiratory distress. And in severe cases, uh, using uh, an intubation to help control the airway until their body is able to control the virus on its own. It's just merely for identification. There is no uh, specific treatment for that virus. There are no antivirals that uh, treat the D68 enterovirus, and there are no vaccinations available. So it just gives us an idea about kind of the course and what to watch for. Yes, uh, especially with the start of school season, it's important that good preventive measures. And uh, with my own children, it's difficult to keep them separated. So trying to keep them from climbing on each other, kissing, hugging. Uh, so just encouraging them kind of to stay apart, play games that don't require them to be physically engaged. Um, not sharing toothbrushes or cups, um, not drinking after each other. And then you can also use Lysol or a bleach solution to wipe down hard surfaces, toys. Can you talk about some of the more serious um, respiratory issues you're seeing in some of these children? Because usually, I mean, usually it doesn't go into the severe realm from what I've read, but people who are at risk um, tend to be more at risk for going there with this illness too. Is that correct? Yes, especially the patients with asthma seem to be having a particularly difficult time with this because it does cause inflammation of the bronchioles, the small airways of the lungs that mimics asthma and can make it worse. So patients are having a more difficult time responding to albuterol and other medications that are used for asthma. And especially the patients with asthma have not responded well and ended up in the hospital. I do not. I think. Uh, at, at this point, the only numbers that we have um, are for the month of August. Um, from August 1st to the 28th, we had 160 patients tested positive for rhinovirus, enterovirus illnesses. Um, again, we don't have any, um, we have not identified or don't have CDE 68 specific numbers in there, but there is no other enterovirus, enterovirus illnesses. Um, that compares to 70,000 in the same time period last year. And these are just the open body numbers? These are um, just children. But for the other specifics, these are people tested at OED VAC in the very beginning of testing that they have these primary medical signs of bronchitis. So viral and enterovirus. Rhino and enterovirus. Okay. Not CD68, but not yeah, And that's all that 100 virus, you know, kind of in the enterovirus family. And this is not uncommon to see a big spike every time we have a new virus come around or even seasonally when RSV uh, starts to kind of be spread around enterovirus every year, we see an increase in the number of patients that present to the emergency room. 
and it coincides well with uh, the beginning of school. So patients that haven't been exposed or children that haven't been exposed now being around somebody that's sick. It's important that if your child's sick also and you recognize that they have fever, diarrhea, uh, congestion, cough, or any nose, if they are in school, be respectful and keep them home until they're better so they don't infect their friends because eventually they're going to make other kids sick and it's going to come back to your child. Anything additional? It can. The enterovirus uh, generally lives in the GI tract, so in your intestines, and commonly will be the cause of vomiting and diarrhea. In this case, this particular subtype uh, is causing more respiratory symptoms, and so cough, congestion, runny nose, fever, muscle aches, and then wheezing being the predominant one that's causing kids to come into the emergency department. Yes, my understanding is that the CDC actually approached based on the numbers uh, throughout the Midwest and said we need to figure out what this is and we don't routinely check for subtypes of enterovirus and we see enterovirus throughout the year but more predominantly during the summertime. Uh, because of the outbreak throughout the Midwest, they've asked to have some of the samples that we've obtained uh, sent through the State Department of Health to the Center for Disease Control for further testing. And that's how they've identified the positives in Oklahoma. Do the children seem to respond well to the supportive care? They do. With proper supportive care, uh, whether it's just IV fluids, uh, albuterol, um, ventilation via endotracheal tube, uh, this is a self-limited disease. It will get better on its own. So relatively few deaths will occur uh, with proper identification and uh, treatment. Do you know roughly how long it's been for it to run its course? Uh, I don't know particularly. Um, I think generally the enterovirus will be anywhere from three to seven days. Uh, even with supportive care, you can get other symptoms that fall along, pneumonia, uh, particularly viral pneumonia, uh, which kind of has to run its course also. Uh, you can have secondary illness, but more importantly, it's uh, causing underlying illness to be kind of brought out, and that's one of the ways it's more dangerous is that kids have underlying medical problems or have more symptoms. Yes. Yes. I, most commonly, it's going to be kids between the kind of two and five year old range. And again, the older you get into adolescence and adulthood, uh, the symptoms are less severe because your body has the ability to respond to it. Also, because your airways are larger, so the swelling that occurs in the airways that will cause wheezing in a small child doesn't affect the adult the same way. All right. Thank you.